Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tamina Maskinia. I am the project manager for the Venice Biennale here at the Australia Council for the Arts. Joining me on screen is Georgie McLean, Executive Director, Development and Strategic Projects. Behind the scenes, I also just want to acknowledge that there'll be someone jumping on a little bit later, Niwaya Lee Maboroja, who is the Project Officer, Major Projects for International. I am on this call from the lands of the Wongal people of the Euro Nation, a place where I have the privilege to live. For this privilege, I pay respect to elders past, present and future. And I also extend that respect to any First Nations peers joining us in this virtual space today. I'm wearing a denim jacket with a brightly colored orange shirt. I have brown hair and glasses on. There are some plants behind me and some artwork. I would also like to acknowledge and extend an apology for folks who are tuning in today, hoping to see Mika uh, Michaela Tai, Head of Visual Arts, who is not able to join us um, and is on compassionate leave. Today, we'll be talking through Australia Council's call for expressions of interest from artistic teams for the next Venice Biennale 2024. Before we start, I just also want to um, let you all know that there is closed captions and a live captioner for this event. Um, if you do need captions, um, if you just press the closed caption button at the bottom of the Zoom window, you'll be able to access the transcript. Today's information session will last about 45 minutes. Georgie will provide a bit of a context of the Biennale and speak to the current open opportunity. And then myself and Neela We'll focus on answering any questions that you have um, to, at the end of the session. Throughout this um, uh, conversation, please do start submitting your questions. Um, there is a Q&A function at the bottom menu of the Zoom window. And we hope to maintain as much discretion through the conversation today as possible. So we do encourage you to submit questions anon anonymously if you would like. But of course, any questions that we do read out loud, we won't announce names either. As you all know, um, joining us today, uh, the application process for this opportunity occurs in two stages. And stage one is currently open. It is essentially a expression of interest, a short EOI form. Applications for this stage uh, close at 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, 11th of October. And that's pretty critical for folks who are not living um, in the eastern states from across the other side of the continent. We're switching over to daylight time from, I think, this weekend. Stage one submissions um, will then be assessed and shortlisted applicants will progress to stage two to prepare a full artistic proposal for the Australia Pavilion. The guidelines for stage one EOIs have just been placed in the chat window for your reference and for you to have a review as we are speaking today. I'm going to now pass on to Georgie to provide an overview of the Venice Biennale project and outline in a bit more detail what applicants should consider when preparing their artistic proposals for this opportunity. Thanks, Georgie. Thanks, Tamina, and hello, everyone. Wonderful to be with you today. I'm joining from um, Gadigal land of the Eora Nation here at the Australia Council offices, and I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of this land and their elders past and present, and to our First Nations colleagues who may be joining us today. Um, I'm sitting in front at the, of at the Australia Council of a beautiful Rowan Conroy photograph, Bot Botany Vertical from 2006, one of the many beautiful artworks we have here at Council. I'm wearing a black jacket and a black dress, lacking some imagination there, I think. Um, and I'm a, a woman with blonde hair in her 40s, probably looking about a decade older today because my five-year-old had me up a lot of the night. Um, but now to this opportunity. So 2024 is a big year for Venice. It is um, marked 70 years of Australia's representation at the Biennale. And we've had 41 distinguished contemporary visual artists represent us in this way, um, exhibiting under the Australia banner. So it's a wonderful legacy to be part of. Um, it's obviously a hugely significant platform um, for Australian contemporary art, and it helps us be known globally for our innovation, our complexity, our diversity, and our sustainability. Our participation in the Venice Biennale offers Australian artists and curators a really high profile international opportunity, providing um, international exposure to new audiences, to markets and contexts, and of course, to be part of that rich world of contemporary art that, that is the Biennale. 
So for this opportunity, we're looking for proposals that are creatively ambitious in scale and content and thought, um, engage with contemporary visual art discourse and global conversations, responsive to the architecture of the extraordinary Australian pavilion and considerate of our audiences. Um, there is no specific theme for this work. It's entirely up to you as creative teams. Proposals may focus on presenting one artist or a group of artists. And similarly, they may include just one curator or a group of curators working together. Ultimately, the artistic team that has been formed must include at least one artist and one curator. So we at the Australia Council are officially the commissioners of the Venice Biennale, and we tend to work very closely with a successful artistic team to manage and produce the work and the exhibition within the Australian Pavilion. And I'm going to hand back now to Tamina to tell us a little bit more about the EOI process. Thank you, Georgie. Um, the stage one EOI application form will ask for the names of the artists and curators, the title of your artistic proposal, a short overview of your idea and then a series, it will then request for you to submit a series of support materials to form part of the ass assessment of your proposal. Um, I like to think of it as broadly who, what and why. We encourage you to please refer to the guidelines as there are quite specific requirements for the support material which should be followed to ensure that your submission is eligible to be assessed. This includes specifics on maximum page count, font size, and also the way you name each PDF to make it easier for the assessment process. Um, both these EOIs and shortlist of stage two proposals will be assessed by a panel of independent industry advisors, including national and international visual arts experts. The names of these industry advisors will be provided in 2023 when we hope to announce um, early 2023, I should say, when we hope to announce a successful artistic team. Applications will be assessed on three assessment criteria, and these are listed in the guidelines. Um, but Georgie, if you could just please expand um, uh, on these. Sure. Yeah, and of course, as Tamina says, they're in the guidelines, which um, has been dropped, have been dropped in the chat. So the first of the um, criteria is quality. Obviously, that's around vision, ideas and artistic rationale, and also includes a level of innovation, ambition, experimentation and risk taking of the project. The second criterion is viability. So how do we achieve it? The skills and ability of the artists and curators involved and their relevance to the proposal and evidence that you have considered and addressed audience engagement and access associated with your artistic proposal. And the third and final of these is timeline, timeliness, the proposal's contribution and relevance to contemporary arts discourse, both in Australia and internationally. Thanks, Tamina. Thank you so much, Georgie, and thank you for joining us today. Um, really appreciate it in terms of also stepping in for Michaela. Um, well, farewell, Georgie, now and switch over to questions. Um, it, there's some questions that have been dropped in, but if you have any questions, this is also the time to start preparing them. Thank you so much, Georgie. Niwa, I'll pass on to you briefly to introduce yourself and provide an overview of the Australia Pavilion. Thanks, Tamina, uh, and hello, everyone. I'm also joining you all from unceded lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to elders past and present and I also wish to extend um, my respect to all First Nations peers um, tuning into our virtual space. Uh, as Tamina already mentioned, I am um, a project officer here at Council um, and I'm also part of the Australia at Venice Biennale team. So, oh, and maybe an audio descriptor. I have a button on shirt, um, which I put on just for you all. Um, and I am a black African woman with um, sort of caramely blonde short, short tape and Afro hair. Um, so, speaking of the Australia Pavilion, uh, it is one of 29 national pavilions within the Giardini, and Denton Corker Marshall designed it as a white box within a black box. Um, and we'll have some visuals up um, for you to see, so you kind of have references to that. And it's been designed to be a neutral palette for exhibitions housed within it. We'll just let that come up. Um, so you can refer to um, floor plan and images uh, which we've provided in the guidelines to assist with your proposals. Keeping in mind, full details will also be available to stage two shortlisted artistic teams for their detailed visual proposals. 
Um, just a little bit more about the pavilion. Um, uh, large slabs of black granite give the building its dark exterior. Some panels fold open, namely the main entrance, a panel that opens up a window to the canal within the gallery space and two external facade panels that can be used as billboards. And the successful artistic team will have access to the internal gallery space and selected external areas, including the entrance deck. At base build, the gallery space is white with a total ceiling height of just under five meters. And the gallery dimensions are almost a square, uh, measuring 14.9 by 15.9 meters with a total floor area of about 236 square meters to work with. The pavilion does have a presence within the Giardini, but it's also tucked away. And we encourage you to consider its context and the Biennale on audience when preparing for your proposals. Thank you, Niwa. Um, and finally, some things to consider as you're preparing your application, so you're um, as uh, informed as you can be. Firstly, we encourage you to have a go, dream ambitiously and apply, and also encourage others to, to consider this opportunity as well. Don't uh, discount yourself based on perceived readiness. And we say that because it is a significant um, platform and significant project. Um, but it is really uh, an opportunity to be considered. So you're informed. We also uh, need to mention that the Venice Biennale project is quite a multi-pronged international uh, project. Whilst the exhibition itself is the major component of, of your engagement, artistic teams will also be busy with national and international media engagement, requests and planning from PR teams, participation in key events for the project and involvement in some aspects of the communications and audience engagement strategy. The intensive development and making period for the Venice Biennale will commence from about February 2023 and really ramp up from August 2023. Media and PR engagement um, starts to intensify towards the end of next year, so November 2023, and then will naturally peak close to the exhibition opening. So as an artistic team, you are essentially juggling quite a, quite a lot of things um, outside of the development delivery um, of the exhibition itself. Applicants should consider, um, sorry, applicants should be prepared and consider the time commitments and collaboration approach with council that will be required to develop and deliver a project of this nature. The successful team will be working closely and collaboratively with the Australia Council from inception all the way through to deinstall. Working on a project of this scale offers significant support and resources to the artistic team. And that is something that Australia Council has intentionally embedded to facilitate the ambition and outcome the successful artistic team requires and what they should be stepping in with. Alrighty, we're going to switch over now to um, some Q and A's for all of you. Please do start um, placing any other questions that you have. Um, and also if there's anything that you're unsure of. Before we jump in, I also want to just raise for you all, if you haven't already done so, I do encourage you to actually open up the draft application form. Please don't leave it to the last minute. Um, if you don't have an account with the Australia Council with our application management system, I encourage you to do that by the end of this week at the latest. It takes a couple of days to uh, have an account with us and it, we don't want that to affect your opportunity and, and application process. Alrighty, Niwa, I'll hand over to you for some questions that are coming through. Yeah, let me um, shoot some your way. I've started answering a few directly, but I think some are worthy of um, a conversation. And please do feel free to send through more um, as they come up. But the first one, um, Tamina, for you would be, can you please better define new artwork? Are there additional guidelines on this? Sure, um, thank you for that question. The Intention for exhibiting in the Australia Pavilion is that it, it is a commissioned piece. So on the 
in the majority, what is presented um, needs to be a new piece of work or a new um, outcome for that artistic team. In the past, presenting artists have also combined existing work um, to uh, connect and expand on the new piece of work that has been presented, but in the majority is a new commission and that's how you should be approaching your artistic proposal. It should not be an amalgamation of previous works um, represented in the pavilion. Thank you. Um, maybe another one that's also worthwhile answering live. Um, given the experienced artist criteria is removed, um, has this occurred to uh, encourage younger artists that has already been selected and told to apply by Australia Council? Yeah. Um, so the there has been, for some who have followed this project for over the many iterations um, and also commissioning models um, that have occurred over the last, as Georgie mentioned, 70 years, there has been some slight tweaks to this current um, EOI call out. In the past, we had been very clear um, that we are looking for what would be considered um, a mid-career to cusp established artist to represent um, in the Australia Pavilion. There is no direct um, minimum years of experience. There was no intention behind that either. It was just to provide an opportunity for people to see themselves and consider this type of opportunity. Um, it also provides a chance for folks to expand um, how they approach a group submission, if that is what you are looking for. Um, and also for intergenerational practice um, to be considered uh, really, so it was just an opportunity to open up um, what could be um, offered for applicants. Thank you, Tamina. We've had a uh, couple of people ask around an artist curator being combined in the artistic team. Is this something that is eligible um, or do we need two distinctive, at least two distinctive um, roles in that? Mm. So at, a, at baseline, we require at least two people to form part of an artistic team. And those two people um, can both be artist curators in their own practice, um, but they must nominate within the actual um, application form and within their roles for the project, who the curator is and who the artist is. We can't unfortunately um, accept applications where there are no curators or curator defined. Um, similarly, we cannot accept applications where members of the artistic team are organisations. So a, a group can be formed by multiple artists and curators, um, but listed people in, those, um, in that group or in that team that you are proposing cannot include an organisation. Um, so in short, if you're an artist slash curator slash many hat person, which is only natural in our in the depth of our um, sector, um, you can be that, but you do need to nominate very clear, distinct roles between the two minimum two people that form the artistic team. That's really helpful. Um, we have a few questions actually at the moment, which is great. So let me try and filter those um, that are worthwhile for a conversation. Um, Maybe let me combine a few that are regards to support letters. Um, one is asking specifically what needs to be included in the dealers. And I think this is um, con in the context of the, uh, a gallery's support letter. Um, what, is, what should be included in that letter? And then the other question in regards to support letter, can other documents such as um, benefactors um, support be included at stage one? Good questions. Um, the support letters are twofold. Um, we, it, would, it would be wonderful if you are affiliated with a gallery to um, provide a letter of support from your gallery. And that's essentially all, all it really needs to be covering. The fact that the gallery is aware as well as of the significant time commitments um, that would be attributed to your participation and aware that they are willing to support um, your time there, that they are, um, I guess, aware of, of 
some of the media commitments that might also require their involvement in, and engagement as well, um, and that they are able to um, facilitate your participation in a way that will be impactful to you um, in terms of um, your engagement with this type of project. If you are not affiliated with a gallery, please do not feel that this disadvantages you. It is just um, something that is uh, present for, for those who are. In terms of Niwa, could you, sorry, just remind me of the other question, benefactor? Uh, can other, yeah, support let, types of support letters uh, be included at stage one? Um, benefactor. I think within our guidelines, we don't explicitly outline any other support letter requests. And so I would encourage you to only um, submit what is required in the guidelines. Um, so at, the short answer is we do not require um, a letter of support from a benefactor. And that wouldn't necessarily also form part of your assessment. So encouraging everyone to only respond to the support material that's listed and required and not expand beyond that um, because it would not necessarily form part of the assessment of your application. Yeah, that's really good, thank you. And I think I've got another question that I'll combine a few because it's a bit of a thematic uh, around time frame um, and time demands that will be required uh, for, for successful team and specifically around uh, whether it's especially curators with a full-time arts role elsewhere, how have they managed with those demands? Um, and have there been specific feedback regarding um, the possibility and feasibility of doing the, both roles, basically? We have um, often curators um, who have either an independent practice, but equally have had curators participate who are part of a organisation existing um, have a full-time role and a, and a number of commitments. It's really being aware that this is this is something that does take up um, uh, space within the the vast array of commitments everyone has when engaging in full-time practice. Um, you will probably see that at least a day a week, um, and that kind of ramps up in different moments, ebbs and flows. But at least a half day to a day a week needs to be considered towards this project if you are the successful artistic team curator. Um, the way that we try to facilitate that as well is to provide as much structure and guidance in um, our production support. It is quite a res well resourced project, so you have a lot of um, support that comes from the Australia Council and then obviously a lot of the other subcontractors that will be engaged as well, based on the proposal that you are putting together. Um, but there is a there is a time commitment involved, um, so it is something to bear in mind when when you are approaching it from a full time practice as well. Excellent. Um, okay, let's see. Maybe a simple one around who owns the artwork. Uh, the way that this commissioning process works is Australia Council as commissioner has a lease and um, loan agreement with the artistic team, with the artists specifically, or artists um, for the work in the period that it is exhibited in the Australia Pavilion. Following that, um, and as has happened in the past, sometimes the work um, is purchased by um, either a gallery institution um, and passed on in that way. Uh, there is also uh, moments where it tours nationally or internationally. The Australia Council does not own the work. The work will be loaned by us from the artist. And then from there, there'll be additional, I guess, um, parameters in place based on what happens once it's made. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to try again to combine a few uh, to clarify some things around the artistic team. So first one is in regards to, are there requirements for applicants to have specific qualifications? For example, uh, curators have other design backgrounds um, such as interiors um, in their portfolio. And maybe one to tack with that is, is there a maximum artistic team number for those who are applying as groups? No, I just had a, um, 
reference to um, it's a big ad, which was an ad campaign, I think, for Victoria Bitter. Um, but you can you can nominate as many artists and curators as, as you wish within the artistic team proposal. Um, I would uh, encourage you to consider, um, I guess, its viability. Obviously, um, as you propose uh, your group, it's based on what you intend to present. And I'm sure there'll be a natural scalability to that. Um, so no, there's the short answer is there's no limit, um, but it's within the reason and rationale that you are offering to your proposal. Niwa, could you, sorry, just repeat the first part of the question? Oh yeah, um, qualifications, for example, with a curator with a design background and other disciplines. Um, is that required? Yeah, are there specific requirements? Yes, yeah. also specific qualification requirements. Written Not written, 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 no. written. Yeah. No, thank you. Not at all. Um, in stage one application process, process, we do request a CV for each member of the artistic team being proposed. And so for, from a curatorial perspective, if a curator um, is, is a curator but doesn't necessarily have a specific arts background but has um, can um, uh, demonstrate considerable experience um, or considerable curatorial projects in their CV, that's completely fine. For example, a curator might um, be practicing in the last five plus years, but um, in different institutions, but does not have a um, arts degree. Similarly, um, a curator does not have to have a range of other um, vocational expertise to participate. Um, you don't have to have a design background. Um, you don't have to um, have a architectural background or anything like that to um, nominate yourself as a curator. There's a significant level of support around all of those um, ele elements um, as well that form part of our production support for the project. Perfect. Um, let me just try and filter again something that hasn't been. Perhaps just to further clarify and to emphasize the role of individuals and groups as the main applicants. So for example, if the artist is also representing an organization, um, do they apply simply as an individual? Is that is that how that works? Or can there be a collective of group, collectivity of people to form a group? The easiest way to understand this is um, the application process itself. Only one person can apply in the sense of um, your, there's only one person filling out the form. Within the form, it requests for you to list out the people who will be forming the artistic um, part of the team and the curatorial part of the team. In each of those areas, if you list an organisation, that is um, something that will be deemed ineligible. So I would encourage you when you are listing out anyone who is considered an artist to, for that only to be names of individuals, even if they are affiliated with an organisation. Um, and similarly, if you are listing and nominating the curator or curators, they are all names of individuals. The process itself as well will be, um, I guess the commissioning process itself as well will not be to an organisation, it will be to the individual. And that's something that will be explained and expanded upon to the shortlisted um, artistic teams for stage two. Perfect. Um, a question in regards to, based on um, past understandings of the Biennale, which is that philanthropy has been a significant part of this project and what expectations would be placed on the artists and curators to participate in um, the philanthropic fundraising activities? Um, and how much support does Australia Council provide for this? Um, in terms of uh, artistic team involvement and engagement, it's, it's very much your presence. Um, and obviously um, for us, it's providing um, information and advocacy on your behalf to the different and phenomenal range of supporters who actually enable the Australia at the Venice Biennale project. Australia Council steers and oversees any philanthropic activity. So we are actively fundraising for the project. We also um, will have a, um, 
a kind of um, approach to to facilitate that um, fundraising as well, either through external support or internally within our organization. The artistic team um, in terms of commitments is very much around presence, um, being available for key supporter events that might occur, being able to offer particular insight into um, your processes and your practice, because a lot of um, this is around just supporting the ambition um, and intent of the exhibition in the pavilion. So the artistic team is not required to go out and fundraise. Um, but we do hope that you can work with us to facilitate that fundraising. Perfect. Um, maybe one I could even answer myself, does the Australia Council provide all project management? Um, and in short, yes, as the commissioner, we are the producer of the project. So we work very closely and collaboratively with the artistic team. Um, and I think as Tamina mentioned earlier, this also extends to comms, marketing, PR, um, and of course, the fabrication installation that we work very closely with you um, from the very beginning, the inception, all the way to the deinstall. Um, okay, let's see. There's a question here around um, uh, uh, Australian citizenship. Um, the requirement right now for this opportunity is that the artist and curator um, must be either an Australian citizen or have um, PR status. There's a question around the budget. What is it? Um, we'll be providing for details of that in stage two. Um, Good, good question, one moment. Um, the exhibition budget itself, we haven't explicitly outlined and relayed in stage one, and that's really just not to affect the approach that you'll be taking. Um, when and if you are shortlisted into stage two, there'll be full, a full detail and outline on the range of the exhibition production budget itself. But essentially something to bear in mind is that it, it covers both the freight, equipment, um, fabrication, operations, maintenance, install and deinstall, as well as um, PR and marketing. So it's kind of a holistic project budget. Um, and then the production budget itself forms part of that. At this point, I can't outline exactly what that is, um, but it is um, it will be something that we relayed in stage two. Perfect. Um, got about 10 more minutes. So let me try and kind of pick up some of the really resonant questions. Um, okay, so just maybe one last time around organizations, because this is still coming up. Can they be, can they not be part of the team? Can they have support elements? Um, so right now, this EOI itself, it's not, and I can see another question um, from someone else as well around other kind of aspects um, and individuals that would provide extensions to the artistic team, like for example, a historian, anthropologist, et, et cetera. Um, this EOI itself is intended to be really, really simple. So at the top, when we discussed, it's really who, what, and why. Um, you don't need to outline every single aspect of um, the types of specializations or other support that you will be um, hoping to integrate into your proposal. A lot of that will be covered in stage two detailed um, artistic proposals and, and the visual visualizations that will come with them. For so really, if, um, if there is an organizational component, uh, I really encourage you not to list that organization as part of the artistic team in stage one. Organizations cannot form part of the artistic team themselves. If you have um, identified other kind of very core individuals who have uh, specialized practice and um, expertise outside of an artist and curator, you can maybe uh, 
speak to them in the artistic proposal component of your application, but don't list them within the artist and curator section. But again, these are these um, aspects will really be more things that you would say for the stage two application process. Perfect. I can see here, Niwa, a question around, can you put in more than one submission per creative team? And the short answer is no. Um, so if your name is listed uh, in someone else's artistic or creative team proposal, you, you cannot then um, create your own application and, and be part of a different artistic team. So um, if Barry Briggs is um, part of one artistic team proposal and also doesn't even realize, but then creates their own. Fortunately, we can only um, we can only assess one um, of their applications. Yes, correct. I've answered a few of those also directly, but would you have that spoken out loud? Um, so many. I'm trying to filter. Let's see. Would it be possible to consider projections on the exterior of the building? Um, could you also expand on the idea of external billboards? Uh, yes, it is absolutely possible to um, project onto the exterior of the building. There's a series of, I guess, um, consideration and dialogue that needs to happen with the um, successful artistic team and the Institute La Biennale, who are the institution that facilitate and deliver the whole Venice Biennale across all of its sites. They have very um, particular requirements for um, noise and, and visuals and um, light. So this would be something that we'd need to facilitate a conversation with them on. Uh, but I would not discourage you from considering that. In terms of visual billboards, um, it's really just how you want to unpack that for yourself. That um, the building can be um, can be marked in a particular way, and you may recall having looked at previous um, uh, exhibiting artists, uh, such as the wonderful Tracy Moffat and others who have during once the um, the new Australia Pavilion was built, there has been kind of um, signage or, or other kind of um, elements proposed for the external um, part of the building. Thank you. So you can see here again, a question around fabrication um, and that sort of thing. For stage one, just to reiterate, we don't need to have a full breakdown of the how um, of your project. That is something for stage two, when we are doing more detailed um, submissions with the shortlisted applicants. We don't know how many shortlisted applicants there will be. That really falls down to the assessment process. Um, but I would encourage you not to um, feel the need to directly list in the sections where you're listing out the artist and curator, um, any fabricators or any other specialized um, folks. You can list it in the submitted support material if you feel it will help with your um, proposal. But really the essence of this EOI um, moment right now is to really understand your idea, the concept, the intention, um, the how it comes in stage two. Yeah, similarly, we, I did answer that question directly around um, whether they can specify the, um, the context of the publication and who's involved. And I did highlight that it's not necessary for stage one, um, unless it's something you feel strongly about, but it's something that you will be re requested to provide within the full application at stage two um, for those who are successful. Uh, question here that probably is worthwhile talking to, is there a fee um, to develop stage two proposals, um, and we and we know that the uh, recipients will be the applicants who are successful to stage two will be confirmed. Uh, I guess somewhere in November, although we can't tell you dates specifically. 
Yeah, we anticipate there'll be about four weeks for you to prepare if you are shortlisted from this particular um, EOI opportunity to stage two. If you are shortlisted, there will be four weeks provided to, um, to each artistic team to prepare their long format um, uh, visuals and proposal. That notification will occur in late October, early November. Um, and from there, you'll be offered the time. We anticipate to announce the successful artistic team, as I was mentioning, in early February 2024. And that's also when we will be announcing, um, uh, not announcing, but relaying the, the list of industry advisors who assisted us um, in the assessment process. Perfect. So I'm probably going to flag at this point that we will definitely will not be answering all the questions live, but we will definitely um, produce an FAQ that we can share with all attendees based on any unanswered questions. Um, so if we haven't gotten to your question, please keep that in mind. Uh, but perhaps one that has also popped up in various iterations is around, um, as an example, can a member of the artistic team be based overseas, so long as they're an Australian citizen? Uh, and can some of the artistic team or collaborators be non-citizens as well? Um, a member of the artistic team uh, who has Australian citizenship and based overseas can apply. That's completely fine. On the second question, in terms of whether members of the artistic team um, who are um, not, um, who do not have um, PR status or Australian citizenship, if I can just ask you to keep that on notice and directly um, contact myself and Niwa, and then we just need to make a bit of a clarification. My instinct says, unfortunately not, but I also don't want to um, keep that open-ended. So we will, we will answer that live. Uh, we will answer that um, directly to you and then obviously adjust the guidelines as well if needed. Thank you. Uh, and did we earlier on, Tamina, say when the proposals for, for the second stage be due? Uh, yes, just a second ago, we were talking about um, uh, that there will be a four week um, application for process for stage two. Perfect. Um, okay, maybe a lucky last question then. And please, if you see one pop up directly to you, feel free to speak to it. How many, uh, how many teams people will be selected for stage two? Yeah, we, um, we won't be able to know. It really depends on the quality um, and also the assessment process itself. So um, that's something that we won't unfortunately be able to know as yet. The last question I'll just quickly respond to here um, is just to re uh, relay um, the, project, the Venice project team that the successful artistic team will be working with um, will be uh, Michaela Tai, Niwa Mabrujra and myself. Um, there will also be other members of the Australia Council organization um, that you would be engaging with, including um, from the CEO down to um, Director of International, the comms team, the com communications and marketing team um, and various other um, support uh, staff. So it's kind of a, a full spectrum of engagement with Australia Council and that also garners its own insights into this. Alrighty, I think that is all we have time for today, folks. Um, thank you so much for everyone to, for joining us today. We really value the time amongst a very busy period. Um, if there are any areas we didn't cover, and I'm sure there are, I really invite you to get in touch with myself and Niwa um, with any questions that you have via email. Niwa will place um, the email address in the webinar chat window. Now it's also on the website um, for any uh, direct contact that you would like to have. Um, but thank you and all the best of luck. And um, it's really wonderful to see uh, the range of folks who are considering this opportunity. Have a good day. Bye all.